Hey guys, how's it going? Companion here. So today I'm going to talk about the most used, the most played card in Hearthstone. And of course, it's the coin. How about that? Now, uh, this is a very interesting card that um, basically, yes, if you go second in Hearthstone, you get the coin. And this little guy, and the fact that you're one mana crystal behind, but you can choose to be one mana crystal ahead, can have some uh, pretty big impacts on the game. So I wanted to talk about those, how they interact, and how this feature um, continues to travel throughout the changes that Hearthstone gets. Because, you know, once upon a time, the coin was, was the most broken thing ever. Once upon a time, uh, Rogue was the most broken class ever, and Rogue these days is, you know, one of the classes that really, really gets a big use out of the coin because it enables combo. Back then, Defias Ringleader was a 2-3 creature and still summons a 2-1. So when you had that on turn 1 and people didn't have sticky 1-drops because they didn't, well, you won the game. It also made combos a lot easier with, you know, things like Gadgets and Auctioneer and a few other things, and it just made it so... Uh, having the coin was really insane. On one end, if you were the rogue, you'd be really happy. On the other end, because rogue was really overpowered, you wouldn't want the rogue to have the coin. So you having the coin, even though, as you will see, is generally a bad thing in Hearthstone, uh, it's better that you have it than your opponent who's playing a combo deck. So it has a lot of very interesting repercussions. So let's talk about this. First, let's let's continue talking about those uh, implications in Constructed. So my understanding is that if you have a combo type of deck, a deck that requires you to, I don't know, play Arjun uh, or Warsong Commander and Grim Patron at the same time, maybe with a bunch of other cards, and win the game from just a combination of a few cards, having the coin is really important because you get to do that before your opponent. And also, having the coin means you go second, and if you go second, it means you get that extra card in your opening hand, thus enabling you to have a greater chance of having you know, the combo realized in your hand. So all of those things basically mean that if a combo deck is really the dominant factor in a meta, then going second is good. It's good not just if you're playing that combo deck, but, but because most people who you'd encounter, if it is a combo-oriented meta, they would be playing the combo deck. So you would want to go second, even though it may be bad for your deck, because you don't want to give them that advantage. Um, and my understanding is that if it's a control meta, it doesn't matter too much. Now, this is this doesn't have too much of a sample size because there hasn't been a control meta in Hearthstone for a very long time, more than a year, in fact. And uh, my understanding is that it doesn't really matter who goes first, who has the coin, and who doesn't, because um, it's just a lot of back and forth. Often the game doesn't get started until the mid game, and in the mid game, most of the cards and control decks are about as good as one another, and both players are playing fairly reactive decks. Uh, often the first player to play a big creature that doesn't get, you know, handled by removal tends to win, but the coin doesn't usually have any factor in that. The opposite side of that is that when players play just Zooey decks, just I want a one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop type of hand, it's usually better to have that going first than it is to have like a double one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop kind of hand with the coin. Uh, so that type of play, the Zooey type of play, the aggro type of play, it's generally better to go first. And uh, when that is the meta, you basically want to go first so they don't. And uh, that basically means that in Constructed, it doesn't actually matter because it varies so much based on the decks that people are playing. And on, on some seasons, it may be much better to go first. On some seasons, it, may, it might be much better to go second. But this mechanic kind of shifts so often that it doesn't matter that it's unbalanced this month because next month it might be totally balanced. Now, in Arena, this mechanic, the coin mechanic, the going first versus going second idea, is uh, much more of a relevant one, and I'll explain why in a second. But first, I got some statistics for you guys. So, um, on a personal note, I generally really, really want to go first in Arena, um, unless I am playing Mage and I have really high quality four drops uh, and just like enough 
to drops. Um, because with some decks, it's okay to not push for the board as fast as possible if you have a high quality deck and it has to have some high quality board clears as well. But in general, you want to be the one doing the one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop in arena because that will basically guarantee you a win if you go first. And the statistics represent that. Um, these are the statistics from uh, the creator creator of uh, Hearth Arena. He might have better statistics for the website as a whole, but uh, his statistic probably relay into um, you know people who use the site because you know he gets to this is ADWCTA. He gets to basically tell people what's good, what isn't, and what type of themed decks they have. So you can see that there is uh, over 4% of a discrepancy between going first and second. In fact, uh, going first is way, way better. Now, my experience is that win rates for Arena never really get past like the low 70s. On some shorter periods of time, some players have shown like, you know, 75, 76 win rates. But overall... Um, that's about as good as it can possibly get. So the difference, 74% win rate of going first versus less than 70 going second, I would argue is a huge one. And this has to do because most decks in Arena follow the Zooey type of play, where you play stuff, you try to get as much stuff on the board as soon as possible, and you want to trade efficiently, because if you trade efficiently, it may not matter that you have a very fast deck against your opponent's slightly slower deck. In some cases it matters, because you're, you're, in some cases you're up against just a ridiculous mage deck, and the first few turns don't really matter, because you're just going to lose before you can kill them. And that's why it's not completely decisive, but you get the idea. There are some more statistics from uh, Arena Mastery. Arena Mastery has 400,000 logged arena runs, and these are, these are the statistics um, from them. It's uh, a little bit over 64% to go first. This is for everyone on the site, and just under 60% for going uh, second. So we kind of see this, you know, 4%-ish discrepancy, and what I was really curious about is how this has shifted since GVG, because I felt that GVG really pushed this zoo theme in Arena to a higher extreme, because it's saturated the card pool, so players don't really have removal, don't really have what they need to catch up in the game. Like, yes, cards like Flamestrike are really powerful, but the chance that you get Flamestrike in your draft gets lower and lower as more cards are introduced in the game. So I wanted to see how this overall statistics from the start of Hearthstone compares with the statistic since the start of GVG, which is this one. So still 64% win rate, but 59% win rate going uh, second. So it's, it's like about half a percent uh, less, and I think that is somewhat significant. Um, I don't have like super accurate statistics for you guys, but if you've played Arena, you can kind of experience how um, this, you know, might translate into that, where going first and having the dream one, two, three, four, five is less likely to be stopped as expansions roll out, as these expansions have fewer and fewer um, spell removals or comeback mechanics or control cards introduced which does seem to be the case. Minions just get stickier and stickier, and thus going first is more and more of an advantage when both players are playing this type of game, the zoo game. So that's pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to give you guys the full rounds on the coin. I want to tell you guys how I use the coin in Arena. And there are a few parameters. Um, I don't think there is much of a difference, but it is important to know, it is important to realize how you should use it. Um, the reason I say it isn't much of a difference is because, you know, for a really good player like ADWCTA, it's a 4% difference in his win rate, and for just the average player, it's also about a 4 maybe 5% difference in their win rate as well. So they're, the type of overall ability to play in Hearthstone is kind of in line um, with the statistic. Uh, good players aren't necessarily worse. Uh, playing second, and bad players aren't necessarily worse playing second. So it's it's about even in that sense. But there are some things you should follow, so uh, here we go. In Arena, uh, it is okay to coin if you have uh, a double two-drop creature, a double three-drop creature, 
or a double four drop creature in your opening hand. Um, and this, this has nothing to do with spells. This has only to do with creatures. And because, you know, when you're just playing creatures out of your hand, you're basically playing your own game. You're playing solitaire, right? You play stuff, you play stuff, you play stuff, you play stuff. Now, if you have, like, a creature and a, you know, a removal, let's say you have uh, a two-drop creature and a frost bolt, that is a little bit of a risky decision to coin up the creature. While, you know, if you play your two-drop with the coin, and you have your Frostbolt in hand. If your opponent plays a two drop, you Frostbolt the two drop and you have like a three drop to follow. That's like the dream. And that's what often happens. But that's not what always happens. Um, what can happen is you might be playing against a control mage. In fact, a high wind mage is the most likely candidate to just not to play anything on turn two or kill your two drop with a Frostbolt. In both those situations, you are screwed. Um, because you're, you've lost the tempo of the coin, and then they get tempo because you skip a turn. So, yes, it can be pretty devastating. In some cases, it's still worth the risk. Uh, I'd say against any non-mage, it's probably worth the risk. But against a mage, if you have a really bad deck, um, and you're just doing very well because you've gotten really lucky in that arena run, it may be worth it. Uh, to take that risk, to play the two drop with the coin anyway and have the frostbolt in hand, even though it's probably most probable that your creature will just die to a removal or the mage will just play nothing and begin to win later on with mid game creatures and flame strikes. Now, this has a little bit of an exception. Um, if you're playing against uh, a medium to high win, uh, paladin in arena, if you're playing against the paladin and you are going second, because shielded minibot is by far the most overpowered two drop a paladin can have, he is very likely to have a few of these cards because that's the type of creature that reinforces the way you normally play a good paladin deck, and that's what's usually going to lead them to be there at medium to high amount of wins in arena. He will probably have several copies of this card, and he will probably try to mulligan for at least one copy of this in his opening hand. So uh, in that case, if you go second and you have a relevant hero power, so there are some irrelevant hero powers, like if you're playing Hunter, your hero power will not really affect the shielded minibot. But if you're playing like a mage, and you have like a 3-2 creature, even though a 3-2 creature really sucks against shielded minibot, and let's say you don't even have another 2-drop, the chance that you're going to get shielded minibot is really high, and it might be worth it to just play it, and let's say he doesn't play shielded minibot, well, you still have a chance to draw a 2-drop on the next turn, so you might not necessarily be screwed, but if you go second, play nothing on turn 1, and they do a shielded minibot against you, your Two drop will basically have to be played on turn three. And on turn three, against the mid to high wind paladin in arena, you've probably already lost the game because you skipped your second turn. And this is especially bad if you know you never really get to play that two drop. So yes, there are some exceptions to this. Um, one fairly clear way you also uh, choose to use the coin is to counter a one drop. Uh, because a lot of players are playing more one drops these days, uh, just coining out a two drop to just kill it, usually it's going to have to be a two three uh, two drop to kill a one drop for free. But having to do that, uh, it's a good idea if um, you basically challenge the board. So if they have a creature that without any answer in their hand would otherwise die for free for your two drop, it's okay to coin a two drop even if you have nothing for the next turn. Because if you wait one turn, so if they do one drop on turn one going first, and then on two drop you decide not to coin out your two drop that would kill their one drop for free, next turn they will probably play a two drop that will trade for your two drop. And in that situation, you will be one creature behind the entire game. So, you know, their one drop will go face, the two drop will trade for your two drop, 3-drop for 3-drop, 4-drop for 4-drop, and every single turn their 1-drop will continue to go face, and you will lose the game on like turn 6, 7, or 8. But if you coin it out, you kill their 1-drop, you might take a little bit of face damage, but on the board, in, term of, in terms of board tempo, you will be evened out even though you skip your second turn. So there are some interesting aspects, and overall, uh, just 
a lot of general knowledge and experience will let you understand all the smaller exceptions and smaller you know details about how to use the coin which is exactly shown as i mentioned in the statistics of arena but in closing thoughts i wanted to mention how um it is kind of a trend that with expansions rolling out um, that they just introduce more and more sticky minions and fewer and fewer ways to deal with them, that Arena kind of gets uh, watered down, watered out a little bit because of this, because it makes it so having just a really good curve is the absolute most important thing over strategy, over card quality, over really anything. And that's really shown in the discrepancy of going first versus going second. So some really interesting stuff. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys enjoy me talk about it. Maybe next time you play, you will reconsider your decisions on how to play with or against a person with a coin. And maybe you can win a few games more from that, knowing this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.